Recently, I was kicked out of my parents' place. I can't say it wasn't expected, but not something I was prepared for. We have been arguing and giving each other the cold shoulder for a while. I stayed at my girlfriend's for a little while. I didn't want to look like the leech living off of her and her parents. Scrambling for something quick, I found a cheap and convenient offer on the apartment website. I decided to give the landlords a call and they allowed me to move in fairly quickly. In a couple weeks, I moved in and things have been quite normal between me and my roommate. For the sake of not wanting to use his real name, we will call him Daryl. I can't lie, it was certainly a mistake deciding not to meet my roommate beforehand, but I had a lot of pressure on myself to make the decision quick. For the most part, we had been getting along, but I noticed that he was sort of an odd character. Daryl never cared too much about his appearance, as he would let his beard get out of control, and he would constantly wear his broken glasses instead of the contacts he had in the bathroom. His sense of style was pretty bad as well. He always wore clothes with stains. His side of the fridge and freezer is only often filled with deer meat and water. A very odd diet if you'd ask me. I understand being in a struggle though, so I try not to judge or be too harsh when I do it. One night after I had recently got off work and couldn't sleep, I heard Daryl leave around midnight. Honestly, the first time it happened, I thought maybe he was going to see a girl. I felt like a proud roommate. I didn't think much of it and went to sleep. This would happen quite often throughout the week. It was something I had grown accustomed to. But this night, it was different. I was up playing video games with my girlfriend. Like usual, I heard Daryl leave and paid him no mind. After a few hours, I was getting ready to fall asleep and noticed he hadn't come back yet. I know it's bad roommate etiquette, but I was curious to see inside his room. So I crept out of bed and walked through the thin halls down to the door opposite of mine. As I walked to Daryl's room, I noticed the lights were on underneath the door. For some reason, I was nervous about finding out what I was going to see. I tried to calm myself down before I entered his room. The closer I got to the door handle, the more my heart raced. I could feel chills run down my spine. It felt like something ominous was on the other side. As I slowly turned the doorknob and pressed the door open, I thought better to myself and decided against it. Turning the door back and turning around to my room, I noticed the front door was open and someone staring at me from the bottom of the stairs. It startled me backwards, and the figure suddenly started running up the stairs. I was too scared to run and resorted to closing my eyes, instantly falling to the floor. When I felt the heavy breathing, I opened my eyes to see the stained hoodie, and see beard, and crooked glasses of my roommate standing over me. It was Daryl. He stared at me, then began to laugh. He said he walked in on me trying to go into his room. Since I freaked him out by creeping into his room, he thought he'd do the same. I looked at Daryl. He wore a devious smile. I was too stunned to react. He grabs my hand and helps me up while he chuckles. Then there was a sudden stop in his laughter. And with a cold glare of what felt like a thousand eyes staring at me, he says with no remorse, no sarcasm or playful tone, if you went in there, I would have had to kill you. There was silence for a few seconds before he laughed again, tapped my shoulder and walked into his room. I felt as if I made the biggest mistake of my life. I ran to my room and locked my door. I couldn't sleep. I had the constant fear of him standing over me while I slept until I eventually fell asleep. The next morning, I decided to go to my girlfriend's house before work. I told her about what happened last night. She looked at me and said, I can't really blame him. You think he's weird, but you were the one trying to creep into his room last night. She made a good point. As we were talking and cuddling, her mother walked past and asked if you heard of the recent cannibal and missing people murders. It unnerves me that I instantly think of my roommate, and it makes me question my own safety. My girlfriend looks at me and says that I'm being overly dramatic. She grabbed my head and cuddled with me before we both fell asleep. I wake up, kiss my girlfriend goodbye, and head to work. After a long shift that kicked my ass, I was way too tired to even stress over my roommate. I sent Daryl a text message and told him I apologized for going to his room last night and that it was wrong of me to do so. I get back home and immediately jump into bed and fall asleep. Unfortunately, Daryl woke me up out of my sleep as per usual. This time, there was a loud thud downstairs that sent shivers down my spine. I hadn't decided whether if I would check or if I would act like I didn't hear it. I decided to learn from my previous lesson and not let my curiosity get the best of me. I locked my door and pressed my ear against it. 
Suddenly I can hear something heavy and bumpy dragging up the stairs. It was loud and vicious. It's almost as if he wanted me to hear what he was doing. Then suddenly it stopped. I hear nothing. I can hear loud boots creep up to my door. Underneath the door I can see the shadow from the light in the halls. I can hear Daryl's heavy out of shape breathing. I cover my mouth to keep myself from making any sort of noise when I hear a small quiet knocking on my door. For the next five minutes, he stands directly outside of my door. I was so scared I shed a tear. I don't know what he could be doing. It's almost as if he wanted me to open the door. Almost as if he wanted me to hear his silent knocks and check to see what that noise was. I see the shadow of his boots leave from the door. I crawl as silently as possible into my bed and stay awake the whole night to ensure my safety. The next day I'm exhausted and I have to get ready for work. As soon as I walked out of my room, I noticed Darius staring at me from the creak of his door. My heart drops as I pretend not to see his unsettling eyes staring into my soul like a lion stalking his prey. I walk to my car, pretending not to see him as best I could, barely staying composed. As I left out the apartment, I noticed there was a smudge of blood on the wall. My entire day of work was miserable. The only thing on my mind was what my roommate was capable of. What were those loud thuds? What did he want from me last night? I tell my girlfriend everything and she seems worried and wants me to stay over for a couple of nights. I tell her that would be wonderful but I have to see what's in Daryl's room before I go. She's angry at me and she tells me I'm going to get myself killed. I told her that I loved her and I ignored her text messages for the rest of my shift. I thought of a plan to try and sneak into Daryl's room. I decided to send him a text saying that I would be working late and going to my girlfriend's for the night. I left my car in the parking lot of my job and walked to my apartment. I waited behind a bush out of sight from my apartment and waited for him to do his late night runs, like usual. An hour or so went by when suddenly he opened the apartment door. I saw Daryl holding a strange looking suitcase with red stains on it. I tried not to stare so I wouldn't get caught. He entered his pickup truck and left. I waited a few minutes to make sure the coast was clear. As I slowly walked into my apartment and looked around the area where the blood was, it seemed to be on the wall behind the couch. As I moved to the couch, I noticed there was more blood and almost made me vomit. I moved the couch back to the spot that I was and ran to the sink where I noticed all the deer meat from the fridge and a bloody mess in the sink. I started to realize that my roommate was just hunting and caught the deer, and that probably explained what the loud thud was. I started laughing a little and began cleaning the sink. Then. My jaw immediately dropped, sending a shiver down my spine, completely shocked by what I saw. A human eye underneath what I thought to be deer meat. I started to realize that it might not be deer meat, but human flesh. My eyes began to water, my stomach turning from the fear of what my roommate has done. I ran from the sink, barely able to hold in my puke. As I get to the stairs, I can see my roommate's door wide open. I know that I should run, call the police and never look back. But I know I would never get to see what my roommate was truly hiding. I have watched enough scary movies to know I don't have much time. I rush up the stairs and blast through the door. The only thing I see is underwhelming cleanliness of the room. No blood, no weapons, just posters of random album covers. I look around and find nothing. I try and calm myself as I get ready to leave the room. I notice that his dresser was uneven against the wall. When I walk to the dresser, I notice there's blood spots on the back of it. I begin to push the dresser and find that there's a hole that a regular sized man can crawl through. I bend over to try and observe the abnormal sized hole in the wall, and I'm hit with a reeking smell. The throw up I once held back almost came forward. I resorted to just turning on my flashlight and poking it through the hole. I saw decaying flesh and bones spread across the floor. I was horrified. I don't know how he was able to contain the atrocious smell of the decaying flesh. I look around inside the hole. There's large butcher knives and a small wooden table. Before I realized what I was even looking at, I hear the front door slam and someone slowly creeping up the stairs. Before he could see me, I hid in the closet. Before he could see me, I hid in the closet. As I hide in the closet, I feel something rest upon my shoulder. I look back slowly and I see a jawless woman whose top teeth now seep into my shoulder. I cover my mouth before I can scream. I don't want him to know where I am. I look through the crack of the closet and realize that Daryl is going to the hole in the wall. This is my time to escape. I had a decision, risk him finding me in the closet 
to make a run for it. As I burst through the closet doors, he comes out from around the corner and tackles me. I scream, hoping to alert my neighbors, and as he's holding me down, I punch him in the nose, but he has no reaction to it. As he's holding me down, he sinks his sharp teeth into my chest. I scream in horror and pain. I manage to push him off me. As he's creeping around, I see how sharp his teeth are from devouring human flesh. He says, I've wanted you for so long. The smell of your elegant blood has been driving me wild. No other meat is comparable to your delicious flesh. Fearing that I might be eaten alive, I crash my head into his. What sounds like a crack in one of our skulls, I feel no pain with the adrenaline rushing through my body. His glasses break, and he falls backwards. I take advantage of the moment, and I get on top and I press my thumb as hard as I can through one of his eyes, trying to gouge him out. I get up as quickly as I can and I run to the door, but it's locked, and I struggle to unlock it. Behind me I can hear Daryl crashing down the stairs. He lunges for me once again, but I am privy to his moves and I slide out of the way. I run my elbow deep into the side of his skull, dropping him to a knee. Then I deliver a knee to his chin as he falls to the floor. I finally unlock the door and I ran with all my heart. I didn't know where I was, but I ran in the middle of the night taking back streets and staying hidden until I eventually got to my girlfriend's house. She rushes me inside. She calls the cops and has them go straight to my apartment. When the cops arrive and search the area, they aren't able to track my roommate, but they do find all the horrors that I witnessed firsthand. My girlfriend and her family let me stay with them for the night. I won't say I was able to sleep much. After a week or two went by, they weren't able to find him. He's out there somewhere, and I won't leave this room till he's found. Every now I get the same eerie feeling as when he stared at me from the crack of his door.